I'm Josh Schneiderweiler, coming up on Football Today. Ronaldinho detenido en Paraguay esta tarde, junto con su hermano, que también fue jugador, el señor de Asís. Roughly one week ago, Brazilian legend Ronaldinho was arrested for entering Paraguay with a fake passport. Now, he sits in a Paraguayan prison with his brother to await the outcome of an ongoing investigation. Today, we break down the case and look at what Ronaldinho has been up to since he retired. So what Ronaldinho did coming into Paraguay was on the basis of basically promoting a few things, three things to be exact. Roberto Rojas covers South American football and is a co-host of the Low Limit Football podcast. I think the main big uh, thing that he was promoting was coming into Paraguay on the Wednesday morning. So last Wednesday, we're recording here on March 11th. He went to do some charity work with La Fundación Agencial, which is basically a a moving hospital that provides medical assistance to low-income children and, and, and to provide that kind of medical assistance for kids on the countryside. He was also there to promote the opening of a casino and the promotion of his own autobiography, given that he was also going to turn 40 that year. So he, he was there to do a bunch of different things. There had been a lot of expectation, I think, ever since the announcement came. I think the photos that you've seen in the videos of him being flocked by many people when he arrived at the airport that day. You know, he already did a couple of interviews before he was going to get started on that kind of work. He was doing interviews at radio stations and whatnot. Ronaldinho, el gran Ronaldinho. ¿Cómo está vos? Todo bien, placer estar aquí. Nos acabamos de llegar y bueno, contento, muy feliz por la recepción de todos. So, everything was perfectly fine. It looked like it was just the any big star coming to the country because I think on the basis of someone like Ronaldinho, you know, Paraguay hasn't gotten many superstars to be able to promote so many things in such a short amount of time. And so what happened once he got there? So, everything went well until around Wednesday night when basically the news came at around probably 9 or 10 p.m. that uh, basically he was uh, given an arrest warrant. He was basically going to be detained on the basis of coming into the country and having fake documents. So what essentially happened was the police searched the hotel that he was staying at, the Hotel Yacht and Golf Club, on the suspicion of these fake documents. Um, he didn't actually use those documents to go into the country because, you know, as a Brazilian citizen, and given the partnership that they have called Mercosur, which allows p- countries uh, in South America like Argentina, Brazil, Paraguay, Uruguay to enter without using a passport, they could just use their local ID. There was no suspicion. So he came in and essentially he was detained on the basis of having a fake documents, not just him, but his brother assist having fake passports and fake Paraguayan ID cards. So it, it was all a, a big mess at the moment. So that means he had to present himself to the local prosecutor's office. He wasn't actually arrested on the spot. He was detained there and then he had to go present to, uh, himself to a local prosecutor's office to see what had come from it. That's why many people were also uh, taking advantage of taking selfies and then also posting on social media because everyone thought that, you know, this was probably going to be like a little thing that given the status of Ronaldinho, that this would be like a small fine and he could go off scot-free without any problems. So that happened and that was kind of the, the general gist of it until Friday night when a little bit more information came about and essentially... The federal government, or should I say the attorney general, actually had to step in and realize, you know, there are actually a lot of more moving pieces to this case. Basically, what had happened was he would end up getting detained. He would actually get arrested and he would have to be moved to a more reserved jail, which is typically used for 
you know, uh, ex-politicians, ex-directors of, of spo- uh, football, more, you would say, white-collar crimes because the other jail that they had used, which is called Takumbu, is, is generally reserved for more violent criminal crimes, which what Ronaldinho and his brother didn't do. So why is this such a big deal? What do we think might have been the actual reason or motive behind the further investigations? Well, to this day, we don't know. I mean, in the case of what Ronaldinho and his brother would have done, I mean, there really is no particular reason. I think what we're only finding out at this moment is that essentially he had gotten these documents as a part of a gift from someone called Dalia Lopez, who you know ran the charity that he was going to promote. So there really wasn't a, a basic reason as of yet. I mean, there had been speculation about how Ronaldinho and his brother wanted to build a company in Paraguay and have it in their name. But, you know, you can't really do that because here in, in Paraguay, you need to have a company of at least five people. And, and maybe he wanted to use that kind of documentation to get off scot-free. Maybe it was linked to, you know, Dalia Lopez's money laundering. The charity that she had created was only found in December. So nobody knew knows where the money came from. And so that's why there is so many investigations coming into place. I mean, now there's an arrest warrant based on Lopez because of that. And so the investigation is still underway while they're trying to find Lopez and trying to figure out all the moving pieces as to why Ronaldinho and his brother got these documents. So what's the reaction right now in Paraguay? Obviously, you know, as you said, they're not really used to having a superstar of this nature in the country to say nothing of one getting arrested? Well, it basically is kind of an embarrassment. I mean, in a way, you know, Paraguay really isn't in the news as much as their other South American uh, neighbors, like a Brazil, Argentina, or, or any of those other countries. So to have that kind of recognition, in a way, it's kind of becoming the butt of jokes. I mean, some people have took it lightly, took it to social media, but others have also become real serious of seeing this as an international embarrassment of how a superstar of his name is being detained in a country where typically isn't really talked about uh, from an international perspective. Based on some of the reports I've seen, it's almost hard to imagine that he can almost have a fair trial or, you know, a fair investigation when, I mean, he's taking selfies with the guards and some of the people that are supposed to be detached from him seem to be cozying up to him. Yeah, I think it's very weird. I think <laughs> I think it's the reason why Paraguay tends to be not as serious as many other countries. I mean, obviously, they have to respect the law and they have to follow it. But I think what many people, at least initially, were thinking that when he was first, you would say, detained from the local prosecutor's office is that, you know, this is just a simple misdemeanor that he does. He's not going to be here for a long time. He's he just pay a simple fine. And given that it is the status of Ronaldinho from an international perspective, you know, they're not going to risk having him in the country for so long when, you know, that could cause a a political problem with Brazil, who are having good relations because of the dependency of both each other. So yeah, it's a very weird scenario, I would say for someone like him. But I think when you start to dig deep into what other pieces are into the saga, they have every right to keep him in the nation. Based on some of these other pieces that are seemingly at the moment unexplained, this is a really big deal. I mean, we could expect some further crimes here. Well, yeah, absolutely. I think the big one will definitely be Dalia Lopez and what her status is in and her involvement in the situation. I mean, the question will be, you know, why was she able to get those documents? How was she able to get the money that, that she got for a charity that was only founded in December and somehow gets a international superstar like Ronaldinho within three months? I mean, that there is that kind of skepticism in a way. But I think for Ronaldinho and his brother assists, I mean, they really are just taking it lightly. I mean, they're really not the ones at fault because, you know, they're not the ones that are making the documents. They only did accept it. But at the same time, you know, that's still a crime. And I think they were considerable about why they needed those documents. I think the fact that they accepted it. And there are a lot of moving pieces as well about Ronaldinho's career as a whole and the controversy that he's had over his post-playing career. And and so it really has become a, a scenario and a situation that 
will definitely take a while. You know, the maximum uh, sentence that Ronaldinho could have in the prison that he's at is six months. But my guess is that if the investigation is indeed found and, and more completed beforehand, then I think Ronaldinho will eventually have to leave the prison and he can get off scot-free. But <laughs> there still has to be a lot to be solved here. Well, as you might imagine with a story this big, there's already been some fallout from this. What happened to the director of immigration, Alexis Pinayo? So Alexis Pinayo resigned as the director of immigration over there in Paraguay on the basis of essentially an embarrassment. I think he had every right to be embarrassed about something that that happened in the country. I mean, it has a bad name to see a superstar of his name somehow enter the country and then have the basis of these documents uh, of a fake ID and, and fake passport. And, and, you know, there have been words to say that he might be prosecuted as well. I mean, that's still in the weight of what could happen. But in basic terms, I mean, this is just like an embarrassment for someone like him. I think this whole case has been an embarrassment for the country to detain a superstar for quite some time because of essentially a misdemeanor, but, you know, a a very serious one. Well, I want to talk about something you just alluded to, which is this is just another incident in a long line since Ronaldinho has retired from football, which was in 2015. What has he been up to since then? Well, basically, what he's been doing is essentially what a lot of ex-players have been doing. I think they're trying to make a name for themselves and make some money off their name. You know, he's doing a lot of promotional work, you know, playing in charity games. I mean, promoting his name as a whole. I mean, he kind of also has that influence from a worldwide perspective. So for the president, Jair Bolsonaro promoted him to a tourism position. He's been also an ambassador for Barcelona, but there have been a lot of problems about that because of issues with the law and unpaid taxes that saw many of his documents be seized. So he's been doing essentially what a lot of ex-players have been doing, just trying to live off their name and and try to to use it as best as they can. And with someone like Ronaldinho, who is obviously well known for the, the huge lifestyle that he had during his playing careers, And nobody can deny the fact that not only was he special on the field, he was also special off the field. Yep. He enjoyed himself and he enjoyed his career. Some people think, well, what might have been if he hadn't partied as much as he did? Perhaps partying was very much of what allowed him to express himself in the field the way he did. It seems like it's continuing to his now going to be 40 years old and it might be coming to an end for him, unfortunately. You mentioned some of his legal issues that he had before this. Can you talk a little bit about those? So basically, some of the legal issues that he made, and this is probably one of the reasons why he continues to be investigated. Basically, Ronaldinho did was obviously he's made a lot of money during his career as a player and is able to capitalize it on on that. So one of the main reasons as to maybe why he did get that Paraguayan passport is that he got his Brazilian passport confiscated because of building a sugar mill with a fishing platform and appear on a lake in Brazil without permission. So because of that, the judges in Brazil withdrew his passport back in November because the player refused to pay the fine of, I think, $2 million or whatever the damage was made. But, you know, he's also had a lot of problems of other debts of like more than a million pounds, a lot of council taxes. And, and so he, he's been really being mismanaged by maybe the people that run his finances. I mean, that really has seen as someone that, you know, I think at one time there was a case of where many of his things were raided, like his cars, expensive paintings, that kind of thing, that there have been rumors that he only had, I think it was like $6.00 in his account and he was unable to pay that. So I think many see why he came to Paraguay on the basis of earning that money that he probably lost and trying to make a name for himself. The whole crazy thing about this is that, you know, this all happened when he was in Barcelona and one can understand how he got there. Nobody knows. I mean, I would assume he probably got it off the Spanish passport, but we don't know if that was confiscated as well. So there, there are a lot of moving pieces and a lot of controversy about Ronaldinho and how his people or maybe how he handles his personal gains. 
Yeah, you say that. He was back in Barcelona in February and went on like a world tour last year. And it, as you say, it no one really knows how he's been able to do all this, which is pretty remarkable considering he is such a noteworthy, famous person. Yeah, I think that's the character that is Ronaldinho. He's always been kind of a flashy playboy that, you know, likes to go out. We look at uh, how current players in, in world football are using their expenses. You know, maybe the likes of Neymar, who was probably the big name in Brazil, in all of Brazil, because of his lavish lifestyle and, and his connections with various celebrities. But for Ronaldinho, this was a player that had always been on the high. I mean, little backstory is that Assis, the, his brother and his now agent, was technically the father figure for him because his original father had died back in a swimming pool accident when he was a kid. So I think it's just that kind of mentality that he's always had about, you know, live life now, you know, and don't regret it because you, you never know when it could end. And just that kind of lifestyle that has its pros, but also has a lot of its cons, which is why that someone like him, you know, could face the risk of bankruptcy if he's not smart and is not able to turn around all of his financial and, and personal problems. So what can we expect for Ronaldinho and this case going forward? Well, I think what's going to happen for him is that I would assume that with this arrest warrant being made for Dalia Lopez, obviously the, the woman that brought Ronaldinho to the country and essentially set up the charity that he was going to promote, I think once she is eventually detained, I think what will happen is that we will see, hopefully, a Ronaldinho uh, free. I think right now, you know, being in the prison that he's in now, which is reserved for the VIPs and that kind of, those kind of people, I think he essentially is going to, he's just in a waiting period. I mean, he, he really is just waiting until a, a further trial and, and like an actual sentence made by the Paraguayan government. So. I think that's we're kind of in that purgatory of what could happen and what might might not happen. So it's all up in the air. I, I think my personal view is that I feel like he's going to eventually get free because I don't think the country wants to risk having a major superstar here for a long time. And they're probably going to further prosecute and sentence the people that were involved in bringing Ronaldinho to the country. Yeah, it sounds almost as if you're kind of getting at he's more of a almost a pawn in this situation and not the one driving kind of the case as much. Yeah, I think that's how we kind of see it. I mean, obviously, there is the case of, you know, why did he accept these documents? I mean, maybe it was fooled into him. We don't know. So, yeah, this case is really, it's super weird. I mean, it's, I don't think I've ever recognized a scenario of a major superstar of Ronaldinho's caliber being detained in a, in a foreign country on the basis of fake documentation. So I think as the days go by and as the weeks go by in this investigation, we're probably going to have a clear picture as to, you know, why did this happen? You know, what was he trying to get into it? And who's at fault here? Who really is at fault? Is it Ronaldinho? Is it him and his brother? Is it Dalia Lopez? You know, what is going to happen? I think is the major question. Roberto Rojas is a multimedia journalist and a co-host of the Low Limit Football Podcast. This episode was produced by John McKenzie and Hugo Chambre. I'm Josh Schneider-Weiler, and thanks for listening. And if you enjoyed the show, please rate and review us on iTunes and share it with a friend.